Please title these notes derivatives for notes, special derivatives, and write today's date. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to find the equations for derivatives in a couple of tricky cases, and then to know the rules for finding derivatives for sine, cosine, e to the x, and natural log. Let's start off with just a couple of tricky cases. These are nothing different in terms of rules from what we were doing in derivatives too. They're just ones that commonly confuse students. The first one that people oftentimes struggle with are negative exponents. So let's say we're being told to take the derivative of the following. Now, we know that if we have something in this form, say, take the derivative of x to the nth, that we just bring down the n, the exponent, and subtract 1. However, this looks a little bit different. And so we need another tool for doing this. One of the really, really key things to remember is that this means exactly the same thing as taking the derivative of x to the negative 3. This is why whenever you see this, you must be able to immediately think of this. Notice that I still have the command take the derivative over here. I haven't done anything to this that involves taking the derivative yet. I'm simply rewriting it. And so this command is still here. I'm just rewriting before I take the derivative. Now that I have this though, I can use my rule from yesterday. All I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the exponent and then subtract 1. What you should notice here though is that this is now going to get even more negative. So if we just applied this rule here and ignored the fact that it was in the denominator, we would subtract 1 from the exponent and have x squared here instead of a 4 in the exponent. So make sure that you always rewrite it first before using this rule. Now if we want to, we can rewrite this. This negative exponent moves to the denominator. And there we go. Please. And there we go. I'd like you to try a problem on your own. Please find the derivative of 1 over x squared. Pause the video now. Okay, to do this, the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this as x to the negative 2. Then we use our power rule, subtract 1 from the exponent. And there we go. Another thing that sometimes trips people up are fractional exponents. Let's say we're in a situation where we're trying to take the derivative of the square root of x. This is again where you have to be able to rewrite like we were doing in our introductory unit. This x to uh, square root of x is the same thing as x to the one half. As soon as we have this, then we're able to use our power rule. Bring down the one half and then subtract one from the exponent. Being fluent with fractions is incredibly important here. In order to do this, this is 1 half minus 2 over 2, or a negative 1 half. So here we've got 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Now, same as we were doing up here, take that into the denominator. 1 over 2, now this is down here, x to the 1 half. It's the same thing as 1 over 2 
times the square root of x. You've got to be really, really, really fluent with that conversion from fractional exponents to radicals. Notice that in calculus it's entirely okay to leave a square root in the denominator. That's something that people just said, meh, we're not going to worry about it anymore. So try your own problem on the side. Take the derivative of the cubed root of x squared. Pause the video now. So before we take the derivative, we're going to rewrite this. This is the same as taking the derivative of x to the 2 thirds. Now when we do that, we're going to bring down the 2 thirds, subtract 1 from the exponent. We can write that 1 as 3 thirds, 2 thirds x, so common denominator is 3, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and now that negative exponent moves to the denominator. And we've got 2 over 3 times the cubed root of x. Right like that. We can also combine these. What if we wanted to take the derivative? let's say of 2 over the cubed root of x squared. All we're going to do is rewrite this. We have to rewrite both with fractional and with negative exponents. So still keeping the ddx, we haven't taken the derivative yet. This 2 is along for the ride. And this is x to the negative 2 thirds. 2 over 3 from the radical, negative because it's in the denominator. Now just as we've been doing, we can take that derivative, bring that down, the 2 is along for the ride, bring down negative 2 thirds, subtract 1 from the exponent, negative 4 thirds x to the negative 5 thirds, then this comes back down, which is cubed root of x to the fifth. All right there. In case it's hard to see, this is negative 4 over 3 cubed root x to the fifth. Try one on your own. Let's take the derivative of 4 and then the fourth root of x. Remember, there's an invisible 1 next to that x. Pause the video now. Okay, first we rewrite it. This is x to the 1 fourth, it's in the bottom, so it's negative. Now we use that command to take the derivative. This is 4, negative 1 fourth, x to the negative 1 fourth minus 1, which we're going to write as 4 over 4. So these 4's cancel out. We have negative 1x to the negative 5 over 4. Then we bring that down, negative. We know our x is going to be in the denominator. Remember, this isn't just something blank. If there's an invisible number in the numerator, it's an invisible one. 5 fourths, that's the fourth root of x to the fifth. So 
So at this point we should be able to do some sample problems, putting together everything from the past couple days. Let's say we've got a function f of x that equals 3x to the fifth plus 1 over the square root of x minus 3. What we want to do is we want to find f prime of x. The first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite our f of x before we do anything involving the derivatives. So instead of putting that derivative, what the derivative equals, first of all I'm just going to rewrite this f of x. It's really important to keep your notation distinct. I'm not going to take any derivatives until I've completely rewritten it. So even though I could take this derivative immediately, if there's a rewrite step, I'm going to rewrite everything. Otherwise what happens is that students have partly taken derivative here and not here, and it's just, it's all over, it's a mess, and they forget to take one part, and they take another part twice, and just rewrite it first. Don't combine taking the derivative with a rewrite step. So we're going to keep this 3x to the fifth. This is x to the one-half, it's in the denominator, so it's x to the negative one-half minus 3. Now I'm at the stage where I'm ready to take the derivative. And once I have this, I'm going to take the derivative of every single term. I don't want to combine, like I said, rewrite and derivative taking in a single step. So this 3 is along for the ride. We bring the 5 down, subtract 1 from the exponent. Here, same thing we bring the exponent down, subtract 1 from the exponent, then here the derivative of any constant number is just 0. Now we're going to have a little bit of simplification in this step. 15x to the fourth minus 1 half, when we do this subtraction this is x to the negative 3 halves, and then we're going to do our final rewrite This is the square root of x. This is x to the third. I'm going to give you another check for understanding problem and then we're going to go on to some of the new rules to memorize. If g of x equals 2 over the cubed root of x plus 9x squared minus 2x plus the fifth root of x squared minus 96, I want you to find the derivative of that. Pause the video now. Okay, before finding the derivative we have some serious rewriting to do. So I want to rewrite g of x. This is x to the invisible 1, so it's x to the 1 third, it's in the denominator. So it's 2x to the negative 1 third. This is still 9x squared, negative 2x. This is x to the 2 fifths minus 96. Now it's all written, I'm ready to do the derivative taking step, that's where that g prime comes in, it's now the derivative. Got 2, bring down the negative 1 third, subtract 1 from the exponent. For this next one, the 9's along for the ride, I bring down the 2. Remember this is x to the 1 power, so just plain old x. Here, this negative 2 is along for the ride. This is x to the first power, so when I bring it down it's x to the 0, which is 1, and it goes away. Here I bring down the 2 fifths, subtract 1, and then the derivative of any constant number is 0. Now what I need to do 
is rewrite that. Negative 2 thirds x to the negative 4 thirds plus 18x minus 2 plus 2 fifths x to the negative 3 fifths. And now I need to just rewrite these and I'm all done. negative 2 over 3 cubed root of x to the fourth plus 18x minus 2 plus 2 over 5 fifth root of x cubed. Looks nasty, but it's just doing exactly what we were doing in the previous lecture. What we're going to do now is we're just going to add in new rules to memorize. There are only four of them, but they're ones that you really, really just got to know. First one, the derivative of sine of x is the cosine of x. Second one, the derivative of the cosine of x is not sine of x, but actually negative sine of x. Third one, the derivative of e to the x is itself. This is why e to the x is so completely and utterly awesome. It is its own derivative. It is the only function that is its, is its own derivative. And then the natural log of x, and this is why we do so much with e and the natural log, is it has an interesting property that its derivative is 1 over x. Really, really wouldn't expect it looking at this. But this is going to come incredibly in handy actually in the next unit. Uh, note that I do a cursive ln, otherwise it tends to turn into an i or just like get really weird looking, but that's natural log or ln. There's one thing that's going to be particularly helpful with remembering, especially these first two rules, and that is this little picture. The sine of x becomes the cosine of x. This is when we're taking the derivative. The cosine of x we saw becomes negative sine of x. Now, if you just think of this negative mean along for the ride, when we take the derivative of negative sine of x, it's going to go back to being cosine with a little negative in front. And same thing here, if there's a negative in front, then when we get negative sine of x for the derivative, we're going to multiply by negative 1, bringing us back in a full circle. So if you remember this, that's going to really, really help you out. What I want to do is I want to show you a little animation just of sort of like where that comes from and why this little cycle is. You don't have to take notes on this, I just want you to kind of see it. So uh, this is a, a graph of sine of x right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little points on for the derivative at each of these grid lines. So right here we can see that the slope is positive. It's in fact positive 1. So I'm just going to put a little dot there uh, for that positive 1 derivative. Here we can see that the derivative is 0. The slope of the tangent line is 0. So put a dot there. At pi the slope is negative 1. And at 3 pi over 2 the slope is back to being 0. So if I put those on and then connect them, lo and behold, what we have here is we have a cosine graph. The cyclical nature of the sine and cosine waves mean that when we take the derivative, we end up with another one of that type of graph. And if we start off with that cosine curve, and we do that same thing of just saying what's the derivative at each point, we see something else interesting. When x is 0, the slope of the tangent line or the derivative is 0. At pi over 2, that slope is negative 1. At pi, the slope is 0 again. 
at 3 pi over 2, that slope is 1. And when we connect those, we see a negative sine curve, just like we had right here. Finally, if we put in the points for the derivative of this negative sine graph, then we see a slope of negative 1, a slope of 0, a slope of 1, a slope of 0, and up pops a negative cosine curve right there. And if we take the slope of, tho of that, then what we see is right back where we started. When x is 0, slope is 0. When x is pi over 2, slope is 1. When x is pi, slope is 0. And when x is 3 pi over 2, slope is negative 1. And there we are. We're right back to our sine curve. So we're going to give a couple of examples of these and then check for understanding and we're all done. So here are some examples. First, let's take the derivative of cosine x minus sine of x. And we're just applying our rules cosine of x, take the derivative, that becomes negative sine of x. Negative sine of x becomes cosine of x. It's not difficult, you just have to accurately remember your rules. So for example, this negative sine of x right there, negative cosine of x, not positive cosine of x. Really, really easy to make that little mistake. Don't do that. The dragon will come and eat you. No, 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 get away, don't attack. Back, back. Bad me. Anyway, in a similar vein, let's say that we have the function f of x equals 2e to the x plus x to the fifth. If we want to find the derivative of that, this 2 is along for the ride, and then we have to remember this. The derivative of e to the x is just itself. This, however, this x to the fifth, this is what we were doing the other day. Here's where we bring down the 5, subtract 1 from the exponent to get that. We can also get these sort of all put together. We could take the derivative of 2 times the natural log of x plus 3 times the sine of x minus e to the x over 4. Let's look at that. Now remember with our logarithm rules we could turn this into 2, uh, turn this 2 into natural log of x squared if we wanted. Um, but because we do know what the derivative is of the natural log of x, there's no real reason to do that. Uh, if you did do it, there's a way to work with it and you can, you can make it work, but um, there's no reason to in this case. This 2 is just along for the ride. We saw earlier natural log, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. Now here we've got the 3 along for the ride. We see that the sine of x, the derivative is the cosine of x. And here, this might look a little weird at first, but think of this as being the same as negative 1 fourth e to the x. So what it really is, is it's negative 1 fourth derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And there we go. So let's do a check for understanding problem and then we're all done. If f of x equals negative 3 times the sine of x 
plus the natural log of x minus 2e to the x plus x to the ninth. Find the derivative of f of x. Pause the video now. Okay, so that negative 3 is along for the ride. The derivative of sine is the cosine of x. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. Negative 2 is along for the ride. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then this final one is using our power rule from yesterday. Bring down the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent. Ta-da! That concludes the notes for derivatives 3.